Hey guys, uh, here to give you uh, a reading of the Declaration of Rights of Man and the Citizen. I will read it to you out loud, so ideally you can have yours in front of you, and maybe just helping you, or if you hear my voice, it'll be easier for you guys to kind of comprehend what's going on. So, I'll be highlighting stuff as I work through it, so feel free to maybe do the exact same thing. So here we go, Declaration of the Rights of Man and the Citizen, approved by the National Assembly of France, August 26, 1789. The representatives of the French people, organized as the National Assembly, believing that the ignorance, neglect, and contempt of the rights of man are the sole cause of public calamities and of the corruption of governments, have determined to set forth in a solemn declaration the natural, inalienable, and sacred rights of man in order that his declaration, being constantly before all members of the social body, shall remind them continually of their rights and duties. Talk about a run-on sentence, right? In order that the acts of the legislative power, as well as those of the executive power, may be compared at any moment with the objects and purposes of all political institutions, and may thus be more respected. And lastly, in order that the grievances of the citizens based hereafter upon simple and incontestable principles shall tend to the maintenance of the Constitution and redound to the happiness of all. Therefore, the National Assembly recognizes and proclaims in the presence and under the auspices of the Supreme Being the following rights of man and the citizen. So now we will read the articles. Article 1. Men are born and remain free and equal in rights. Social distinctions may be founded only upon the general good. Article 2. The aim of all political association is the preservation of natural and imprescribable rights of man. These are liberty, property, security, and the resistance to oppression. Article 3. The principle of all sovereignty resides essentially in the nation. No body nor individual may exercise any authority which does not proceed directly from the nation. Number, Article 4. Liberty consists in the freedom to do everything which, injure, which injures no one else. Hence, the exercise of the natural rights of each man has no limits except those which assure to the other members of the society the enjoyment of the same rights. These limits can only be determined by law. Law can only prohibit such actions that are hurtful to society. Nothing may be prevented which is not forbidden by law, and no one may be forced to do anything not provided for by law. Article 6. Law is the expression of the general will. Every citizen has the right to participate personally or through his representative in its foundation. It must be the same for all, whether it protects or punishes. All citizens, being equal in the eyes of the law, are equally eligible to all the dignities and to all the public positions and occupations according to their abilities, and without distinction except for their own virtues and talents. Article 7. No person shall be accused, arrested, or imprisoned, except in the cases and according to the forms prescribed by law. Anyone soliciting, transmitting, executing, or causing to be executed any arbitrary order shall be punished. But any citizen summoned or arrested in virtue of the law shall, shall submit without delay or resistance constitutes an offense. Article 8. The law shall provide for such punishments only as are strictly and obviously necessary, and no one shall suffer punishment except it be legally inflicted by virtue of a law passed and promulgated through the commission of the offense. All per, Article 9. All persons are held innocent until they shall be proven guilty. If arrest shall be deemed indispensable, all harshness, all harshness not essential to the securing of the prisoner's person shall be severely repressed by law. Article 10. No one shall be disquieted on account of his opinions, including religious views, provided their manifestation does not disturb the public order established by law. Article 11. The free communication of ideas, opinions, is one of the most precious rights of man. Every citizen may accordingly speak, write, and print with freedom, but shall be responsible for such abuses of this freedom as shall be defined by law. 
Article 12. The security of the rights of man and the citizen requires public military forces. These forces are therefore established for the good of all, and not for the personal advantage of those to whom they shall be entrusted. 13. A common contribution is essential for the maintenance of public forces and for the cost of administration. This shall be equitably distributed among all citizens in proportion to their means. Article 14. All the citizens have a right to decide, either personally or by their representatives, as to the necessity of the public contribution. To grant this freely, to know what, is, to know what uses it is put, and to fix the proportion the mode of assessment, and of collection of the duration of the taxes. Article 15. Society has the right to require of every public agent an account of his administration. Article 16. A society in which the observance of the law is not assured nor the separation of powers defined has no constitution at all. Article 17. Since property is an inviolable, sacred right, no one shall be deprived thereof except where public necessity, legally determined, shall clearly demand it, and then only on condition that the owner shall, the owner shall have been previously and equitably indemnified. So that is the reading of the Declaration of Rights of Man and the Citizen. Uh, the next video will have some more uh, explanation of this document.